Okay, because it's, it's just basically one portion of the zone system. Basically, what you have is a curve that could be, in essence, broken into three parts. From the start to over here, you have a curve that could be largely replicated by a straight line like that. Okay, and that part's called the toe of the curve. And then you have what's called the straight line portion from about here to roughly here, and that could largely be replicated by that straight line. That's the straight line portion of the curve. And then you have the shoulder of the curve where it finishes at the end and you can replicate it by that part. So there's the shoulder of the curve up here, the straight line portion, and the toe of the curve. You don't really want to be up here because there's very little separation. And you really don't want to be down here because there's very little separation, it's very flat. So as you increase the exposure, you know, like this, you know, one stop, one stop, one stop, you're getting very little change in the overall density. But when you're in the middle section, the same increments in exposure yield very large density in uh, changes. So that's where you want to be, okay, in that portion of the curve. Now, here's the reason you don't want to put your shadows in zone three. First of all, all that stuff about putting shadows in three come from sensitometrists. These are people that play with step wedges, okay? They, they, they deal with a, a density, an amount that's absolutely even. So zone three is a density. It turns out that there is a major difference between tonality which is what sensitometrists work with, and textures, which is what photographers work with. When we're in the real world, if you talk about zone three, you're talking about a range of tonalities that average zone three, that make up what we talk about texture. Same with zone four, zone five, zone six. So it's an average, and that's why you see texture. I mean, if you're talking about zone five, zone five is a gray card. There is no texture at all. There is a tonality, okay? When we talk about zone five in photography, we're talking about an average, and you see plenty of texture there, which means there's a variety of tonalities that make up that tone, okay? Now, if you expose something in zone three, zone three is really roughly right about there, okay? And what you do is you have a range that goes from here to let's say there. That's what constitutes zone three. Well, part of that is on the toe of the curve. So you're losing some of the separations. You're flattening out part of it, okay? Now, if instead of exposing something that you want to be in zone three, in zone three, instead you expose it in zone four, somewhere over here, now your range is from here to here. See what I mean? It's all on the straight line portion of the curve, okay? You have better separations. Then you take that negative, you stick it in your enlarger, and you simply print it down to zone three. But now that zone three has better separations in it than if you did it by exposing it in zone three. It's that simple. It's just that simple. It's getting everything on the straight line portion of the curve where you have better separations. So the thing is, you in essence, you overexpose it somewhat at the beginning, and then print it back down, but you don't end up in the same place. You end up with better separations. Now it turns out that when you're down on this portion of the curve, you're getting little separation. And here's what happens. You end up with prints that are flat. Now everybody's heard this term. It is the most perfect term that you could think of because the way you get a feeling of dimension in a photograph, a feeling of spatial dimension, is tonal separations, okay? So what happens is if you have portions of your negative down in, in the toe of the curve, a lot of you probably had this, ex this experience where you print it and if you really want to get a good black, all these dark areas just kind of all go black and you really don't see anything. So then you print it a little bit lighter and you, you actually see the separations, 
but you don't really have any black there. You all had that experience. I sure had that experience early in my career. And I, and I couldn't understand it because I thought, well, if I gave it a little bit less exposure and then expanded the contrast, expanded the development, I'd separate things out. What I was doing was I was pushing myself further and further on the toe of the curve. And it turns out when I do a, a full talk on the zone system, once you've exposed things here, you can't develop your way out of that. You're stuck there. That doesn't, nothing changes. And after going that direction for some time and getting just equally bad and worse results, I said, this doesn't make any sense. What if I went the other way and I gave more exposure and less development? And I suddenly got myself out of the problem. And I said, how could I go for less development, i.e. less contrast, and get everything better? And I didn't understand this. And then I looked back at it and I said, Bruce, you jerk. I mean, the shape of the curve, the mathematics tells you what was there, really. I mean, this tells you what is there. So basically, the idea of putting the shadows in four is the difference between photography and sensitometry. Okay? If you're only dealing with tones, yeah, put the shadows in three. But in photography, we don't deal with tones. We deal with textures. Okay? And a texture is made up of a range. Okay? And you want that whole range to be on the straight line portion of the curve. It's that simple. It's that simple. So it turns out that it's not just my interpretation that, no, don't put the shadows in three. It turns out it is flat out wrong to put it in three because you're losing separation. So what happens is when you, when you have the, the negative down here, you're going to get a print that is tonally flat, and you're going to get a print that is dimensionally flat. You actually lose that feeling of spatial separation. So the term flat is really a very perfect term because it applies both ways, tonally and dimensionally. And you, you, you lose that feeling. And one of the things that you'll see when you start exposing your negatives higher up on the scale, since almost everybody starts out making this mistake, they're too low in their exposures, you'll suddenly see a tremendous jump in the dimensionality of your prints. I mean, it's just instantaneous. <coughs>